Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bro Paul. In fact, that message, my, it just stirred up a lot. One, it stirred up a lot inside of me. Two, it explained a lot. I've been in this place where, like, in a crossroad. I'm obeying, but I don't understand what I'm, why I'm obeying. <laughs> and if you walk with God, there is a place like that. Where God will blindfold you and say, just follow me. There is no explanation. It's like... <laughs> And that place is a place of a test of obedience. And it's after you have obeyed, it will not begin to make sense. You know, as Bupo was, ex- was you know, talking about the process of the prophets, I began to understand it. There is a process called sacrifice. The Lord just took me back to my first, when the Lord dealt with me, when I, I began to take the steps of a prophet. It was just me. That was the first time I was leaving my parents' house. Young. I was going to be independent. And this prophet had told me, if you don't leave this house, you will never be a prophet. Even though that was not the word. He said, you will never be a true disciple. Everything I've taught you will drain. You go back to that. You just be a churchgoer. You will not know the Lord. Everybody else will call you good boy. But God will call you the person that denied me. And everybody was against this guy. Everybody was against him. He says, is this guy that is corrupting you? See, that's the same thing happening. There's a, you know, time is returning. There are people talking. Ah, he's the one corrupting these children. And when they bring the evidence, they look so true. It's like, see, it's true. See, see, it's like the truth. The whole, the fellowship I was in, everybody turned against this prophet. I grew up in the house. I was very obedient. I was an adopted child. So my dad was a police officer, very strict. So I never rebelled against my dad once. I will disobey. They will flog me, you know. But that I will intentionally say I will not do this thing. It never happened until I had that, this encounter. This brother began to tell me, he said, the Lord is sending you to the wilderness. You will leave your father's house. For the first time, my dad was mad. He tried to control me. Took me to our shop. Dropped me. Said, sit down here until I come back. And when my dad says, sit down here, his face is enough. But as he was driving out, I was, I was living through the other door, making contacts on how to leave the house. My dad was, he looked, I could see the fear in his eyes. What was happening to my son? I was his only son. And the brother called me. So one day as I was praying, the Lord, this thing looks like a rebellion now. I was telling God, this thing looks like a rebellion. I had a vision where somebody wanted to place a curse on me. So I called the brother, I was discipling me. Look at, he said, what you do, write a letter. This is a letter, write the letter, tell them that, you know, we have been suffering. I want to go and hustle. <laughs> Just drop that letter and leave. I dropped the letter. Packed my load. I was going. I still remember the scripture. I, did, I was going to meet a friend. That was the first time. Independence. Going to meet a friend as a pastor. So I, I entered the bus. From Owere to Abba. This word just came. The day when Israel came out of Egypt. The house of Jacob. From the people of strange language. Psalm 114. In the bus. My goodness. The joy of the Lord overshadowed me. That was when my walk with God started. Praise the Lord. There is a difference between truth and true. You can hold the Bible and never know truth. It takes the Spirit of God to show you truth. And He does not show it to everybody. That thing that happened from the day Moses came out and said, who is on the Lord's side? And he said, if you're on the Lord's side, how you demonstrate? Take a sword, pierce your friend, your brother, your cousin, your relative, on the other side. It will, that is a must for everyone that will be a disciple. I want to title to my message, what is the Lord doing? What is the Lord doing? Still in line with the processes of the prophets. What is the Lord doing? This is the word the Lord gave me yesterday. What is the Lord doing? The Lord has a long-term plan. Call it long-term, medium-term plan. And what is that plan? To recruit prophets, gather prophets, to fill up all the spheres of life, spheres of society, seven spheres of society. God is gathering prophets, calling prophets. And I, 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 I notice 
you know, four areas, four things the Lord is doing. Number one is identifying prophets. Identification. You may be listening to me. For the fact that you are hearing this message is not an accident. When you saw the call, you saw the team, maybe on social media, one way or the other, someone told you, and you had school of the prophet, and deep call to deep. There was a reason. There was something within you that resonated. That is a sign that you are being identified. It's one thing to be identified. It's another thing to heed. So the Lord is identifying prophets. And I want us to look at 1 Samuel chapter 3. I would love it if someone can help me read. 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 4. The story of Samuel and how, you know, he was identified. Please, if, if you, yes, thank you. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Hmm. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, one of the things the Lord is doing is that he's identifying people who do not know that they are prophets. You're having all these experiences, dreams, experiences, but you don't know that there is a call of a prophet on your head, on your life. In this season, there is identification. There is identification. Deep is calling to deep. It's like the story of the, the hunter that found the eggs of an eagle. And put it together with took it uh, took it home and put it together with the eggs of a of a of a hen, and the two eggs hashed, and the eagle began to you know roam around with hens, grew up and was pecking 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 everywhere, until one day, an eaglet flew through the sky, and let out a, a you know a cry, and something in that that hen that that Ego that eagle that grew up with, with with cheeks, something resonated with that, and he knew that ah, there's something about me, <laughs> and that's one of the things the Lord is doing now. You hear the voice, you sometimes just something little, and deep calls to deep. The Lord is calling fresh prophets. Say, see, your life is more than what you are doing. You, oh, and for some people, when that thing happens, you begin to become dissatisfied with any, any and everything. What is happening? You say, come, come up high. Hallelujah. And what the Lord wants to do for fresh prophets is that he wants to connect you to older prophets for mentorship, for training, for guidance. He wants to connect you. And that's why the Lord is setting up something like this. Is the Call of the Lord. School of the prophets. When we were closing last year, during our sanctification week in church, I, I, after, that, after that meeting, I had a dream in the dream. There's a secondary school in the, um, in the community where I grew up. The name of that secondary school is Holy Ghost College. I've always known that, that name. I've always known it. But when I woke up from that dream, that name had a new meaning. I knew that 2024, the Lord is calling me to a Holy Ghost college. The dean is, <laughs> you want to, yeah, I'm sending you to college now. That takes me to the second point. First point is that God is recruiting new prophets. Second point is this. Prophets already in active service are being called up high. There's a cry, come up here. And I will show you things to come. Dealings are going to be changing. Praise the Lord. You're already a prophet. You're already in active service. The Lord is saying, pruning for more fruitfulness. And I've observed that whenever, whether God is calling fresh prophets or calling prophets in active service to higher levels, the things that what Paul was sharing will begin to happen. One of the signs is that these things will begin to happen in your life. Number one, relationships change. Part of what the Lord requires to be laid on the altar are relationships. Dear relationships. 
It can be a change of community, a change of company. To go to this next level, there must be a change. A line is drawn. You see, you can't, we can't continue again. A pattern of ways. Praise the Lord. A separation for deeper dealings. And there are many, many parallels in the Bible. When God remembered Moses, it was time for Moses to be trained. What happened? He took him out of Pharaoh's house. And there are different ways this separation happens. It is either willingly or by force. <laughs> Whichever way, that separation must take place. In some cases, God gives the option. Say, come. Make the choice to separate. In other cases, God causes a problem, like in the case of Moses. If Pharaoh was the one chasing him, he had no choice. He had to run to the wilderness to survive. But that was God's way of taking him to the place of preparation to enter the ministry of the prophet. So all this is identification. Your dreams, God begins to litter your dreams with signs. And all these signs is for one reason. He's calling for your attention. I was listening to our school of the prophets last year, last two years. And one of the things what Paul mentioned about when God is calling you is that he wants you to turn aside and look. I don't know how many of you remember that statement. Well, in 2022, we need to, if you have not listened to that, I know it will be made available. It's on YouTube, yes. You can follow on YouTube and listen. I don't know if there was any editing on YouTube. <laughs> As for that raw one. <laughs> That's why it's good to be on ground. Be you did as or at least connect when it's happening live. I'm telling you. I, I was listening to some things. I'm like, my goodness. Be two years time. Look at the things that have come to pass. One of the, the, the principles he talked about, turn aside and look. And Paul is explaining what it means to turn aside. There are times God will never speak until you turn aside to look. Okay? You begin to ponder what is the meaning of all these dealings. Some people don't, they don't, they don't. I had a dream. God got up, forgot it. Continue. What kind of life is that? You are having dealings and you just threw it away. And you see, the danger with those kind of things is that you can waste your life. I remember a story Brother Billy Akoni told about how he went to preach somewhere on the crusade ground. He preached so powerfully. And in the midst of his message, an elderly man ran to the altar and fell. The message was in the line of the call of the Lord. Who will go for me? Who shall I send? The man fell. Gray hair all over his head. And he was crying. He said, can I go now? Can I go now? So Billy said, hmm. Tell us your story first. He said, when he finished university, the Lord called him. Come and serve me. He said, ah, I just finished university. Let me work some more, marry, you know, when I settle. <laughs> Nothing unsettles you like marriage. <laughs> he got a job as a teacher. Got married as he wanted. The call came again. He said, ah, I just started. Let me just become headmaster. So that when I retire, what they pay me is big enough. There are three other stages that I can't remember. Now he retired with gray hair. He was not asking Brother Gile, can I go now? In that gray hair, he now remembered that, ah, I chased the wrong thing. Listen, every human being, there is something the Lord created you for. You will never discover. It's not something you choose. It's something you discover. No matter what you choose, no matter how much the, the world applauds you, no matter how much you enjoy what you chose, if it was not what you were created to do, you just wasted your life. The world may call you a legend. Have you, have you seen some of those, those, those men that they have gotten to the height of their career? Everybody's clapping for them. Everybody's amazed. And they are so empty. We, we hear those stories, right? They never discovered what the Lord ordained for them. And this period, this season, the Spirit of the Lord is sending out a cry. Don't be a wanderer on the face of the earth. 
One of the things the prophetic does to you is that it makes your work precise. You don't take careless steps. Your work is precise. Your work in life will be so precise. Yesterday when Bob Paul was sharing with us, he talked about how some dealings he had to the point that where God showed him how his life will end. There's a way you walk with the light. Remember one day I had a dealing and the Lord showed me. See, if you are faithful, this is where you will be in heaven. I was like, wow. <laughs> Our life is planned out. Not just in time, but in eternity. One of the things the prophetic does begins to show you. There are things he won't tell you until you take the next step of obedience. So there are fresh prophets. God is calling. You don't even look like it. God is calling. All of a sudden, somebody meets you, gives you a word. Three people give you a word. Here and there, you're getting words. You hear a message. Everything is looking like a coincidence. He's sending a message across. Hey, you are wondered. Number, number three, backsliding prophets. You used to work with the Lord. You know there's a place you stopped working. You know there's a place where you stopped working. You know that what you are doing now is not what the Lord has called you to do. And every day you carry the guilt that, ah, I've gone the wrong way. The door of mercy. In this season, there is an opening of the door of mercy. Like Jonah. In the belly of the well. And he's crying for a second chance. Like Samson. Eyes are lost. Hair has been cut. And he's saying, God, strengthen me one more time. The Lord says, is a time of mercy. Is a time of mercy. The door of mercy is open. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, come back home. Come back home. You know one thing that surprised me about the life of Samson? They say, those he killed in his death. <laughs> More than those he killed in his lifetime. Remember, he used Job bone of an ass to kill 1,000 men. In his lifetime, when he still had eyes. They now thought that because he doesn't have eyes now, he's no longer dangerous. He was more dangerous. He killed, he wiped, and he killed the most important Philistines. All the lords that came to watch him. And the Lord is saying, I'm I'm, I want to call back the backsliding prophets. They missed it. They entered, they began to walk a wrong walk. And so that, 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 that nagging fear that won't go is the mercy of God. You have tried everything to quench the voice of conscience and it will not be said. It is the voice, it's the mercy of God. And this period, it has become louder. Why? This is the appointed time. See, come back and be trained. So he's calling fresh. He's calling backsliders. He's elevating those already in active service. See, I'm calling you to a higher. You know, Apostle John, I think it was John chapter 4 from verse 1. He said, and I saw a door in heaven open. And I had the words, come up here. And John began to see new things. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I hear this word from Paul and Sister Diana. As you go back to your province in Ottawa, it shall be the same province, but a new dealing. A new dealing. A new dealing. Thank you, Jesus. I saw your assignment increase. I saw your assignment increase. I saw your assignment increase. The city began to look different. Not because the location had changed, but the dealings had changed. I saw new help. New help. And I saw, you know, it's like, Isaiah, when he said, lengthen your stakes and straighten your cords, enlarge your borders. I saw that. Hallelujah. So that's one of the things the Lord is doing. Recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. And when, in the day when the Lord is recruiting, you must be careful. One of the things that, that, that separates men in scriptures, one of the things that hinder men from following God is relationships. There were two people that followed Naomi. Two daughters. Two daughter-in-laws. Two daughter-in-laws have lost their husbands. 
upper and root. And they, the Bible says they cleave to their mother in law. There was something they saw in this woman. There was a, they knew our destiny is connected to this woman. Both of them knew. And the, you know, Paul talked about the test. There's a test before you go to the next level. There's a test. And for them, Naomi said, See, I'm old. See, it's not a uh, parasiva. May the Lord open our eyes to know to whom we have been connected. It may not look like it. Think about it. Naomi was old. See, even if I marry today and I were to give birth to children, will you wait? I'm an old woman. There is no sign, nothing that shows that there is a bright future in me. And I'm going back to Israel. They don't know you. You will be seen as an abomination. But the, the Lord, heaven was looking for somebody. Can you imagine what it means? That you'll be one of the grandmothers of the Christ. Opa weighed it logically. The Bible says he kissed his mother-in-law and went back. She was going back crying. Do you know that kind of cry? You know you have left the path of destiny. You know it. It will not happen to me. God forbid. I was watching The Chosen. You know that place where Nicodemus wanted to follow Jesus. He knew that this is, he knew it. The witness in his spirit was strong. This is the Messiah. He gave him money and went back. The wife had threatened him. He said, I like our life. I like our life. Jesus said, I'm sending a sword. This sword is not a sword that separates you from your enemies. It's a sword that separates you from those you love most. My own 1999, separated from my family. So for years, I didn't know where my dad was. I didn't know where my mom was. My prophetic dealings started. One of my relatives, everybody was talking. This guy has become useless. He has lost his mind. Hallelujah. When the Lord wants to separate a prophet, there are many people that from their mother's womb they were ordained to be prophets. But they will not embrace the sacrifice. They will not go. They count the cost. And they stay back. It will not be our story in Jesus' name. For some people they start obeying. When it's time to go higher, the Lord demands a sacrifice. They, don't, they are not willing to make the sacrifice. May the Lord give us the grace and the strength to make the sacrifice in Jesus' name. Paul had talked about sentiments. So one of the things that the Lord is doing now is calling for prophets. He's calling, he wants to ordain prophets. He wants to anoint prophets. That will fill in positions. You know, there are many of you, even people watching, wherever you are watching, you will never know who you are until God shows you who you are. Peter was called Simon. It was the day he discovered Christ. He said, discovered, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. As he saw the revelation of Christ, he saw himself too. That was the day he discovered himself. He said, okay, since you have seen this revelation, you too. <laughs> say, you are not Simon. You are Peter. Rock. Can you imagine? He was the opposite. You know, Simon. Simon is a reed. There's this grass that grows around water. He is very shaky. And what it means, and that was how Peter was. That was how his nature was. He will say one thing today. He will say another thing. If you can say one thing in the morning, in the evening, he will say something different. He will, you know, you know, even here he manifested it. After calling him the Christ, he now turned around and rebuked him. <laughs> say you can't die. <laughs> Hallelujah. But his calling and his destiny was totally different. And that's where the Lord is taking us. We're in that place where is the decisions of destiny. I was talking with Apostle Adam some days back, and he was, I was sharing with him some, some experiences, painful experiences, and he said this, because you are in the core. See, what you are, you, the decisions you are making, the reason why you are losing this friend, losing this person, losing everybody is talking against you, is because it is a core decision. I was expecting he would understand. <laughs> he said, forget it. He will not. And God made it that way. 
Hallelujah. I was watching a movie and they were to escape from a particular um, high detention security place. And only one person escaped. So the, these guys now went and got the one person because they want to now break in there to do something. So they say there's only one person that has ever escaped from this place. So they went to look for him and brought him. When the guy showed them how he escaped, <laughs> you know, there's something turning like this and you have to calculate it. If you miss it, you are gone. <laughs> and when the, when the guy passed, the guys that brought him, these were like seals. He said, this guy is insane. <laughs> he said, yes. That is why it was designed like that so that if you, it's only one person that can pass. And that's where we are. Only one person. This journey, you, you, you will decide for yourself alone. Amen. In the kingdom, majority does not always carry the voice. In fact, many times, many times, the voice of majority is the wrong voice. I, there are things that have happened in this few times that scared me. I say, Lord, somebody can actually think that he is on your side and is actually against you and not know. It scared me. How, like what? Somebody can be putting his hands inside God's eyes. And even if you, even if you open the Bible and say, see, he will not see it. When the Bible says, and their eyes were, were, were sealed, or their hearts were closed, they, they couldn't see it. And Jesus said something. He said, many kings and wise men have desired to see the things that you see. So, but they have been hidden from them. I was asking the Lord, I, I expected more people. And the Lord said, the decision of today is more or qualitative. The Lord is, is looking at the sacrifice. Is the quality of the sacrifice that is interested in. The people that have said <laughs> no to father and mother and her God. That's what. People that love convenience, today is not for you. The path that the Lord is taking us to is not for those that love convenience. I want to sleep enough. I want to, I want to, uh, let me just stay at home and watch. <laughs> May the Lord help you. <laughs> because if the Lord has noticed, ah, he likes convenience, okay. He will keep making the path. You know, the path will just keep, until that convenience. <laughs> but what captured it powerfully? is designed to kill the flesh. So if your own flesh the part of your flesh that is highly developed is that I love to relax. I love my rest. I love my sleep. I love my food. He will design. Say, okay, this is the part I design for people that love food, rest, sleep. Oh yeah, enter. <laughs> and he has many ways. So if he loves you, he will send a dog. Good dog. And the only way to escape that dog is that part. <laughs> you will run in. And as you are doing, ah, before you know, you sleep, rest, everything. You to be cutting off, cutting off, cutting off. By the time you get to the other side, you are looking like Christ. <laughs> With, without knowing, you look so much like Christ. They bring food, you say, ah. <laughs> it has been cut off. Hallelujah. So there's a call. Listen, our world is going to be so dark. It is only the people that walk this path that will survive the days that are coming. They are the voices that... Hmm. Our world, look at... The Lord was showing me yesterday. He said, look at the conservatives and the liberals. Have you noticed that the conservatives, they, they are very... Anywhere they enter, you feel their impact. The nation, they are the ones ruling. Any nation where they are ruling, they are ruling. The conservatives are just struggling. Why? They are so docile. Innovation comes from the liberals. The liberals, the ones that, the, anywhere they enter, they don't keep quiet. Conservatives, they are the ones that will keep quiet. They are not so, they are not as pushy. And the Lord wants to do something in us. Do a work in us. That is separate, that something that just going to church on Sunday and coming back cannot do. And he's calling people. Come, come, come. Hallelujah. 
The second thing after identification, recruitment. Oh, the reason why you're having the signals, the, the experiences, is so that you'll be recruited. Recruited for training. But Paul has read 1 Kings 19 from 19 to 21. And there are different ways. If you look at the scripture, you see different people who are recruited different ways. In the case of Saul, he was looking for his father's ass. But that was what, there are people that are recruited, they didn't even know. God lured them. <laughs> Saul didn't know he was being lured. He, was, he thought he was looking for ass. For some people, his problem. They came to meet the man of God for problem. They came, ah, please solve my problem. No, you say, ah, don't worry, your problem has been solved. By the way, God has more important matters. Hallelujah. Recruitment for some. He lures them for recruitment. And after recruitment, training. Training. And I've discovered that in the place of training, that's when you begin. There are different kinds of prophets that God has with different kinds of assignments. And it's in the place of training that your sheep will be manifest. One of the reasons why false prophets have been in the landscape of the church globally, especially in places like Africa and then other places, is because of the, the lack of proper training. There were people that began to have experiences that we are leaning towards the prophetic, but nobody to train. And before you know it, they entered into error. From error, they institutionalized the error. So everybody now took that error as a template. And the Lord is saying the kind of training he's bringing, one of the first things he'll begin to do is break down erroneous templates. Destroy erroneous templates. And that's one of the assignments is giving a ministry like justice, prophetic ministry. That's one of the things he's giving. Begin to read, and you see, when God wants to destroy erroneous templates, he begins to exalt the accurate template. When people see, oh, this is the accurate template, as they see the accurate template, they begin to, you see, I don't know how, uh, this is an example, um, there's this clothes I bought some, some years back, many years back. And I've used this clothes so much, it was faded. But I still love the clothes. I was still wearing it, one shirt like that. One day, I entered this, this office. As I entered, I saw somebody wearing the same shirt. New! I just sneaked out. <laughs> I want to use that as an example. Error and accuracy. I saw, that, I saw how it was shining. Hey, <laughs> see, people, let me not disgrace myself by standing. I forgot about what I came to look for. I just took off. I wanted to be very far because if anybody sees me, it will just be screaming. Everybody will just be screaming, say, oh boy, <laughs> go and throw this your own way. Can you see how people are hugging error because they have not seen the authentic? There's somebody we were discussing, some, something that came up and we were discussing, we were laughing. There's an erroneous minister. And I, I see, when he says things, I see how people say, ah, they bring joy, you know. And they, I'm like, goodness. Do, do these people know how serious what they are playing with is? And the person is, you know, gallivanting, you know, just presenting himself as a prophet. And you see, there are many things that came to my mind. So I was preparing. I'm asking the Lord, why is it that the enemy so attack the prophetic? Why? You know, the prophetic is one of the oldest ministry from the Old Testament. Abraham, the first person that I saw in Genesis, the Bible says he was a prophet. And God introduces the prophetic in sensitive times. In fact, when I looked at it, I saw that it was the prophetic that started the Bible. It's the prophetic that closed the Bible. Genesis. Revelation, the prophetic. And that's the one the devil just went for. Just, and he looked for different ways, pollute it, corrupt it, make it so horrible that people, there are places where if you just say, before you say, <laughs> they will just dodge. When I was in Nigeria, there's one day I was, go, I was on the streets, walking behind this 
two gent um, one lady and a man. They were just discussing. And the boy was just telling the lady like, ah, that when somebody says a pastor, he said, okay, it's understandable, it's bearable, it's respectable. He said, but you see that thing that they call prophet. Say once he said pro, he said, Ingo just carrying two eyeglass where? <laughs> and he started start looking at you and he holds his pulse. He holds everything. He's very careful. Now, and, and, and it's things that have happened that has led the mind of people to that point. Praise the Lord. And, and it is all the work of the devil. And if you look at scriptures, you will notice that when there is so much darkness, every time, every season of gross darkness, God does not raise pastors. He doesn't raise evangelists. He sends prophets. In the days of Jezebel, he raised a prophet. They are like God's battle axe. See how corrupt the political field is. Are you saying God cannot anoint a prophet? Somebody that will walk into politics and change politics. God can. Praise the Lord. And God was showing me one of the things he will be doing in the place of training. He will be dealing with character and competence. Where, you know, the reason why people go from church and then they go to the political field and they become corrupted is because they were never trained. Is it that they are not called to that field? Or they are called but they are not trained? Why do I say this? We have seen in the Bible, Daniel. Daniel was like in politics. He was in the king's palace. You know, it's not in the days of democracy. It's in the days of king's autocracy. If the king doesn't like your face and he said, I don't like this person's face. As he's saying it, the people that remove your head are waiting. I'm telling you. <laughs> you. Haven't you read the book of Esther? He just said to Haman, ah, will you also rape my wife in front of me? The Bible said they covered, <laughs> they covered his head. <laughs> and that place used to make me laugh. <laughs> he didn't say cut off his head. He didn't say kill him. <laughs> he didn't wait to be told. <laughs> because it would be like, what, what, oh, what are you waiting for? Oh, you guys planned it together. So they didn't wait. They just covered his head and took him away. And of course, you know what that means. In a time like that, there was it Daniel. What are we saying? Is it that God has changed? No. He hasn't changed. And he's about to prove it again. There will be another Daniels. Daniels that will rise. They will not rise. Everybody will know that this is a Daniel. In Egypt, there were Josephs. God has not changed. Times may change the grace of God. Times does not release the power of the grace of God. He said, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So the Lord is saying, I am, there are people I'm calling and the kind of training I will pass them through. They can walk into darkness and shine. They will enter those mountains that the devil has spoken, he's telling God, he's even boasting to God that this is my mountain. And God said, don't worry. The person I used to collect this mountain from you will be a teenager. You know God loves things like that. Goliath, Philistine brought their Goliath, six fingers, very tall. <laughs> God laughed. He said, send a teenager. God, God doesn't just want to win. He, he wants to disgrace the devil enough so that when he wins, for many ages, he will still be telling the story. That's the kind of thing God like, likes. Hallelujah. So the, where, why I'm saying all this? Because you have a high calling. This calling is a high calling. Is a high calling. Praise the Lord. And the training any part of the training that we dodge, it will show. When the Lord wants to show us mercy, if you want to dodge it, you think you have escaped it, <laughs> you will meet it in front. <laughs> if the training he wants to deal with is your pocket, he knows that you are money at five and six, he will, he will, he will tell you dodge, he tell you dodge. You will now meet it somewhere. You know when Balan was trying to run, the angel will go, 
the the donkey would until the the engine has stood where there is war, there is war, there's nowhere to go to. So the training of God he will, until he brings us to conform to the image of Christ. Hallelujah. So our trainings, we must pay attention to our training. When I was still in 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 Portaco, when I moved to Portaco, I found myself in the midst of people that were all we were all in the wilderness together. And for years we're in that wilderness. And there was this brother, his name was John. We all knew that we were sentenced to wilderness. We used to meet there to pray. It was a, a Christian library where we meet, pray, study, read, read the word. This John now went into business. He was doing photography business. So I remember one day he came and there was this brother that was brought guard. He looked at him. He said, John. He just, he said it jokingly, but it ministered to my spirit. He said, John. The John I know was sentenced to the wilderness. So how is it that you, you have left wilderness and enter business? Praise the Lord. If we don't go through his training fully, it will show. Hallelujah. And we must not live half-baked. Don't live half-baked. Don't live half-baked. There's also grace for the journey. Don't look at how weak you are. I remember when I wanted to start and I was, I was, the day the brother was telling me, he said, you have to leave. My hands were shaking. He said, don't worry. See, this is what I'm telling you. I remember that day when I left, when I, I, I went, my ability to hear God went to another level. There are things the Lord would tell me and to look as if I had it audibly. And it took my faith. My faith had a leap. Before I, I obeyed, I used to struggle with assurance of salvation. After I obeyed, assurance of salvation, there is nothing you tell me. God was real. Praise the Lord. So the place of training. Now, what are the things that we need? Number one, God, we need to respond accurately. As you are hearing, you are wondering. You know that the signs, God, all the signs are shown. You know the Bible says many are called, few are chosen. That you are called does not mean you will be chosen. How you respond determines whether you are chosen or not. How do you respond? God is looking for accurate response. Alignment. Some people are being called and they are responding wrongly. God is calling you. Come to the school of the spirit. Come for training. You now went and registered in Bible school. And you think that's the accurate response. Are <laughs> you understanding me? <laughs> I remember the story of Chris Delvan. He said when God started dealing with him, his dealings were unique. And hey, there are people, the dealings you are having are unique. Chris Delvan was the first psalmist that was using music that I know, that was using music to, to send across the message. He did song talk. He would sing and talk. That was the first time I was seeing that. And song talk went viral. He was the first person I knew that would come and talk about all his feelings. Talked about how his marriage crashed. Talked about how he was a drunk. All the things he did. The things that pastors will not say. We will tell you all our good parts. We will not tell you our struggles. He was the first person. And of course, you know, and this is African society. And they were expecting that people would run away. That was what attracted people to him. Many people thought that this guy is authentic. He said that was what authenticated him. Young people loved him. He was going from university to university. He would tell you, see, his wife doesn't believe in his calling. He said, once money enters his wife, he said, once money enter your hand, you will receive calling. Oh yeah, give me. <laughs> he said he had finished a concert. They gave him 30,000 naira. So he, he called his wife, said, Ah, there's money. You come, let me let's enjoy small. So he was reading his Bible in the book of Acts, and he saw where the Bible says, you know, Paul had a dream where they say, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And he, and he said, he was just reading. He said, God, this thing did it end in Bible days? Does it not happen in our own days? Can't somebody just, you know. Does God not speak like this again? He was just asking that as a question and he fell asleep. His Bible was still open. 
in his hand. And he saw a Ghanaian man. He said, come to Ghana quickly. The gates are open. Come before the gates shut. And he woke up. And by the time he woke up, his wife has landed. He started telling his wife, wow, that the Bible is real. That this thing he saw in the Bible just happened to him now. The wife, he said the wife was looking at him suspiciously. He said he's going to Ghana. The wife said, any time money enters your hand, <laughs> ministry will enter your hand. <laughs> share and give me my share. <laughs> That's how he preaches. That's how he preaches. But that guy opened that path. He changed gospel music. Before others are just catching up. Chris Delvan was the first. Change gospel music in Nigeria. And I sense there are people that the Lord is talking to. What I want to do with you is novel. I want to use you to create new paths. There is a generation that the current church cannot reach. And I want to train you in the back paths of the wilderness. So that when you show up, you will blaze a trail. Chris Delvan's songs, amazing. When his song hit everywhere, I remember it was, I don't know which year, one um, youth service in, uh, this year, uh, you know, in, in, there's this thing that coppers used to do. They all gather in Joss. I've forgotten what they call it. But all the people in NCCF, all the major um, fellowships in the university, when they do their youth service, they all gather in Joss. And that year, it was Chris Devon that spoke. And that was how he went viral. Everybody. That was the first time I heard about him. He has always go, was always hiding me in the north in Kaduna. We never saw who is this person. And everybody's Chris Devan, Chris Devan, Chris Devan. But God hid him. And one of the things God wants to teach our generation is how to hide. We should we do the issue. Please forgive me. <laughs> in case you are that's 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 Nigerian pigeon. For we like to show. You don't have anything you are showing. No content. You are looking for traffic. Traffic now gather. Okay, so what are you selling? <laughs> I just want you to gather. <sighs> and the Lord said, hide so that I will produce content. Hide. I, I, I'm not lying. Go online. You see all kinds of empty things. They have found all kinds of trickish ways to get your attention. They say, ah, they will not put one, um, you know, catchy title. By the time you click it, what they are saying is totally opposite. Sometimes it's outright lie. But you know, for every click, something goes to their pocket. So they just want you to click. And some of us believers, unconsciously, ministries are beginning to invent such things. No content. Do you know that was what was happening in the days of Christ? The Pharisees and the Sadducees, no content. People kept coming to the altar, coming to the temple, going on that cycle that does not connect them to God. The Lord looks for a man, Zachariah. He says, Zachariah, you have been part of this thing for too long. I can't even use you. Let's wait for your son. The son was born and God took John the Baptist and from childhood took him into the wilderness. Go and hide him. Why? God wants to blaze a new tree. They have so corrupted that temple. He wants to send out a new voice with a new message. And there are many people, that's what the Lord is doing in your life. You want to go and shoot. You can't wait. He says, sit down. Don't post. Don't do anything. He's putting government upon your life. You don't want to hear. He kept you on the Baptist until the right time. And you know the right time. He didn't tell him to go to the temple. He says, stay in the wilderness and cry. He became a voice in the wilderness. Crying. What was he crying? He was crying an uncommon message. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Praise the Lord. It is the place of hiding that content is built. Haven't you seen even in nature? There's this thing we, we studied in biology. The life cycle of a fly. Life cycle of a butterfly. From egg to pupa to lava, and then withdraws everything, hides you. Do you know that even in the occultic, they do the same thing? 
I was studying something recently in Nigeria. They are, you know, the LGBTQ community, they are looking for a way to get into Nigeria. So they are dredging all the past to find out something, to find history that connects them to Nigeria. Looking for umbilical cords that they will use to enter Nigeria. They went into the 80s and they found this man. And I actually know the man in the 80s. After the Civil War, this was a man. And he went into hiding for seven months and seven days. And on the seventh day, he came out as a woman. She had beds, but he, he dressed like a woman. Thai rapper. You, his name is called Arias Kata. If you check online, you see him. And I remember in those days, he started playing. He has this calabash thing that he plays. And he'll be singing. And they, he made waves in the east. Eastern Nigeria, everywhere. The LGBT community, they are using that now to write all kinds of projects. <laughs> to authenticate their presence. Hallelujah. They say the first cross-dresser. They just dread that guy. He died of a motor motor accident. It was still in the eighties. He died. So, but what I, why I brought that story is this: even in the occult, for you to go to the next level, there is a separation. Where do you think the devil landed from? From the ways of the Lord. Separate you, the Messiah. The Bible says for many years he waited until he was thirty. The appointed time. So we must separate from our, uh, this our generation. This is love for, um, what do you call it? The ambition. That you want to go and start something. And when you, you look at what the person is starting, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't have anything to say. And many times when we do that, you even, you even destroy what God himself wanted to do. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So there's that place. And in that place of training, God trains us to wait. Stay in isolation. Stay in the place of waiting. You learn to trust God in the place of waiting. You learn. I, I, I worked with some minister some time ago. And I said, this minister, older minister, anytime he has financial problem, he's looking for who to beg. Who to, and I'm like, what is this? It was so embarrassing. And I was like, see, if you can't trust God to meet your financial needs, how will you be able to teach the people under you to trust God to meet their financial needs? And once they notice the way you are begging, you will lose your respect. They will never believe the word of God in your mouth. And I just saw somebody that dodged the wilderness and jumped into ministry. He didn't go through the training process. And when I say wilderness, I'm actually talking about training process. Praise the Lord. And when you see somebody that went through that training, he knows how to wait. He knows how to trust God. Are you getting me? He will not embarrass the Lord. He will not drag the name of the Lord in the mud. Why? He has learned. He has learned. He has learned. God has put him in through, passed him through situations where he saw God show up. So he knows God will not fail. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The place of our training will begin to discover. You know, there are new things, you know, uh, the past um, couple of years. There are new things I've discovered about the prophetic. We talk about things like prophetic language. God begins to bring us into new relationships that enhance our calling. Some people that are listening to me now, the biggest problem you have are the, is the company you are in. As long as you are in that company, you will never become the man that God has ordained for you to be. As long as you are in that relationship, the tie is so strong. If you don't, and God is saying, if you don't break it, forget me. People that you thought you can't survive without them. Sometimes what God do, he just severe it. And then you notice that, ah, I was wrong. Some is jobs. Jobs, ah, without this job, I'm dead. I'm a dead man. And God says, okay, cut off the job. Are you not discover, ah, ah wow, but I'm not dead though. <laughs> you discover it's not that you're not only that you're not dead your three times a day meal has not failed and you are wondering but how is it coming before you know it's six months one year two years six years may we not be like the monkey you know the, the story of the monkey that he, I think it's in Australia that they use calabash to catch monkey they would just take peanuts pour it into the calabash and tie a chain around the calabash so you know 
The monkey will put his hand into the calabash and pack a handful of peanuts. And you know, when you form a feast, your hand cannot come out of the calabash. <laughs> and these monkeys will form a feast. They will see the person coming to catch them, coming. They'll be screaming, but let go of the peanuts and run. <laughs> they will not, they'll be screaming until the person will come and catch them. <laughs> and sometimes that's what the Lord wants to break. You know, that's human. You don't know the connection to greed. We're so connected to that thing. And God wants to deliver us. And He will now pass you through some trainings. See, let go. Let go. Praise the Lord. There's a new crop of people the Lord is raising for different mountains. The Lord has looked into the past and so many sons and daughters that he expected to excel and he saw them fail. In fact, an entire generation that has failed the Lord. And the Lord wants to raise a generation that will not fall into the ancient pits that the former generation fell into. That is why when you say, ah, my dealing is too severe, that is what the Lord wants to deal with. Hello. But I believe he shared something. He said, I forgot what he said happened. And God looked at him. And God said, you too. So I can't trust you. He said, that was what the Lord was saying. So I can't. You see, he was begging and begging. And God was showing, God now started showing him many people that made promises they were so fervent and then they failed God he said that they cried before the Lord hallelujah apart from the fact that there are generations that have failed our world is getting darker than their times so our training our training must be stronger so that the grace upon our lives too will be much more vibrant Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So what does he require? It requires sensitivity and obedience. Sensitivity, obedience, faith, trust him. Trust him. I feel at this point we're going to rise up to pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can we rise up before the Lord? I want us to take that song again. I won't stop praising you. Can you help me, Stester? We won't stop praising you. Mm. We won't stop praising mm. you forever and ever. Forever and ever. We won't. We won't stop praising you. Oh, we won't. We won't stop praising you forever and ever. Forever and ever. We won't stop praising you. We won't. We won't stop praising you forever and ever. Oh, forever. Oh, we won't, we, we won't stop praising you. We won't, we won't stop praising you forever and ever, forever and ever. Oh, we won't, we won't stop praising you. We won't, we won't stop praising you forever and ever. Praising you forever and ever, forever and ever. I'm hearing gatekeepers, gatekeepers. I'm hearing the Lord say, I am looking for gatekeepers. I am looking for people that will pay the price to become gatekeepers. Gatekeepers, gatekeepers, saliba satia. Can we just begin to call upon the Lord? Say, Lord, release grace. Release grace. Too many gates are left unmanned. 
The enemy is taking advantage of it. Darkness is creeping upon us because there are no gatekeepers. Salabatoshiva. God is looking for men that will put their hands on the plow and say, Lord, I'm available. Lord, we cry out to you. We cry out to you, Lord. Kaze masa baba bara gadaya, e braga da baba yaga zaba baro shu braga daya, e la baba yaga baza gadosi gabarusha, imbra yaka basa doski braga zaya. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord is saying I'm looking for people that will not pursue ambition, people who will stand for the kingdom of God. Stopping darkness. Stopping darkness. Can we lift up our hands to him? And say, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Here I am, I'm available. I'm available. I'm available. I am weak, but you are strong. From my heart, oh God. I'm available. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. There are provinces that darkness has taken over. The Lord is saying, I want a man that will man the gates. There are institutions that darkness is reigning. And the Lord is saying, who will bring down this principality? And plant the flag of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sela bakatoski bragadaya me katoski vasaya. The Lord is saying, I'm looking for a people that will turn the tide. Turn the tide. Daru zave kababa kasia. Lord, we have come. Mako se bregeda. Eroska bragazelana. Eve ko ba 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 ya sero kamanate ambra ya kabesa kovina. We have come, Lord. We have come, Lord. We have come, Lord. Zagrozele ma 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 ya gradosa ya. Libra gaza ba gaza ba barusha bragazina. We have come, Lord. Today, Lord, we ask that you will anoint us. Anoint us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. You know, I see like a ghetto. I see um, like somebody being tied a ghetto. Around your loins, a ghetto. La Bisa Kai. Empower us. Empower us. Empower us. Thank you, Jesus. We will not leave this mountain the same way. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I see a notebook where somebody wrote a dream. I see a notebook and the person wrote like a dream, something you're going to do, something like your dream. And the Lord will take that dream from the paper stage to the stage of reality. Maruske praya sena. The Lord is saying, hand it over to me. Hand it over to me. Do not seek to be seen, heard, or known. Don't seek a name for yourself. Let the driving force be for the kingdom. The purpose of this dream is to defend the kingdom of God. Bring about the kingdom of God. And the Lord will take that dream and make it a reality. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word that you have released today. We ask that it will bear fruits in our lives. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, sir.